everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of WIDS 2023. This is the eighth annual Women in Data Science Conference. As you know, WIDS is not just a conference or an event, it's a movement. This is going to include uh, over 100,000 people in the next year, WIDS 2023, in 200 plus countries. It is such a powerful movement. If you've had a chance to be part of the live stream or even be here in person with us at Stanford University, you know what I'm talking about. This is Lisa Martin. I have had the pleasure all day of working with two fantastic graduate students in Stanford's Data Journalism Master's Program. Hannah Freitag has been here, Tracy Zhang. Ladies, it's been such a pleasure working with you today. I want to ask wise. you both, what are, as we wrap the, the day, I'm so inspired. I feel like I could go build an airplane. Exactly. Probably can't, <laughs> but WIDS is just the inspiration that comes from this event. When you walk in the front door, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. Tracy, talk a little bit about what some of the things are that you heard today that really inspired you. I think one of the key words that's like in my mind right now is like finding a mentor. Yeah. And I think like if I leave this conference, if I leave the talks, the conversations with one thing is that I'm very positive that if I want to switch, say someday from journalism to being a data analyst, to being like in data science, I'm sure that there are great role models for me to look up to and I'm sure there are like mentors who can guide me through the way. So like that I'm I feel reassured for some reason. <laughs> it's a good feeling, isn't it? What do you, Hannah, what about you? What, what's your takeaway so far of the yeah, day? Yeah, one of my key takeaways is that anything's possible. Mm -hmm. So if you have your vision, you have the role model, someone you look up to, and even if you have like a different background, not in data, Definitely. data science, data engineering, or computer science, but you're like, wow, this is really inspiring. I would love to do that. As long as you love it, you're passionate about yeah. it, and you're willing to you know, take this path, even mm -hmm. though it won't be easy, yeah. um, mm -hmm. then you can achieve it. And as, as, I sa um, as you said, Tracy, it's important to have mentors on the way there. Exactly. But as long as you speak up, you, you, yeah. know, you raise your voice, you ask mm -hmm. questions and you're curious, um, you can make it. And yeah. I think that's one of my key takeaways. Exactly. And it was just so inspiring to hear like all these women speaking on stage and also here in our, in our conversations mm -hmm. and learning about their um, you know, career path and what they learned on their way. Definitely. Yeah, you bring up curiosity and I think that is such an important skill. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you could think of data science and, and think about all the hard skills that you need. Mm -hmm. The coding. But as some of our guests said today, you don't have to be a statistician exactly. or an engineer or a, or a developer mm -hmm. to get into this. Data science applies to every facet of every part of the world. Mm -hmm. Finances, um, marketing, retail, manufacturing, healthcare, you name it. Data science has the power and the potential to unlock massive achievements. Exactly. It's like we're scratching the surface. Yeah. But that curiosity, I think, is a great skill to bring to mm -hmm. anything that you do. Mm -hmm. And I think we, for, for the female leaders that were on stage that and that we had a chance to talk to on theCUBE mm -hmm. today, I think they all probably had that, I think, as a common denominator. Exactly. That curious mindset. Mm -hmm. And also, something that I think is hard is the courage to raise your hand. I like this, I'm interested in this. I don't see anybody that looks like me, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I shouldn't do it. Exactly, exactly. in addition to the curiosity um, that that all the women you know bring to the table is that, um, in addition to that, being optimistic. And yeah. even mm -hmm. though we don't see gender equality or like general equality in, in companies yet, um, we make progress and we're optimistic about it and we're not right. like negative and complaining the whole time, yeah. but you know, this positive attitude mm -hmm. towards um, a trend that is going in the right direction and even though there's still a lot to be done, exactly. um, we're moving it that way right. and yeah, being optimistic if, about this. Yeah, exactly, like even if it means that it's hard, even if it means you need to be your own role model, mm -hmm. it's yeah. still like worth a try and I think they, like all of the great women speakers, all of the, the female leaders, they all have that in them, like they are they have the courage to like raise their hand and be like, I want to do this and I'm going to make it. And they're role models right now, so. Absolutely, they have drive. They do. Right, they Definitely. have that ambition to take something that's challenging and complicated and mm -hmm. help abstract end users from that. Like we were talking um, uh, to Intuit. I use Intuit in my small business for financial um, management. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how they, they can from a mach machine learning standpoint, pull all this data off of documents yeah. that you upload and make that, abstract that, all that complexity from the end user, make something that's painful, taxes, mm -hmm. 
maybe slightly less painful. Yeah. It's still <laughs> painful when you have to go, do I have to write you a check yeah. again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but talking about just all of the different applications of data science in the world, I, I, I found that to be very inspiring and really eye-opening. I hadn't thought about, you know, we talk about climate change all the time, mm -hmm. especially here in California, but I never thought about data science as a facilitator right. of the experts being mm -hmm. able to, to make sense mm -hmm of what's going on historically and in real time, mm -hmm. or the application of data science and police violence. Exactly. We see far too many cases of police violence on the news. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an epidemic that's a horrible problem. Data science can be applied to that to help us right. learn from that and hopefully mm -hmm. start moving the needle in the right direction. Absolutely, exactly. and especially um, like one sentence from Gayatri from the very beginnings, um, I still have in my mind is then when she said that arguments um, no, that data beats uh, um, arguments yes. mm -hmm. in, in a conversation. That yes. if you be like, okay, I have this data set and it can actually um, show you this or that. It's yeah. much more powerful than just like being, okay, this is my position or opinion on this. And I think in a world where we have increasing like misinformation and yes. sometimes censorship, as we heard in one of the talks, mm -hmm. it's so important to have like, um, data and reliable data, mm -hmm. but also acknowledge, and um, we talked about it with one of the, um, our interviews um, that there's biases in data, yeah, and right. we also need to be aware of this and how to, you know, move move this forward and use data science for social good. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for social good. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think they like data and the question about or like the the, the problem solving part about like the social issues or like some just questions. They definitely go hand in hand. Like either of them standing alone won't be anything that's going to be having an impact. But combining them together, you have a data set that illustrate a point or like solves a problem. I think, yeah, that's definitely like where data set science is headed to. And I, I'm glad to see all these great women like making their impact and combining those two aspects together. It was interesting in the keynote this morning, you, you, we were all there mm -hmm. when Margot Gerritsen, who's the, one of the founders of WIDS, and Margot's been on the program before, and she's a huge supporter of what we do oh. and vice versa. She she asked the non-women in the room, uh -huh. who, those who don't identify as women stand up, and there was a handful of men, and she said, that's what it's like to be a female in technology. Oh my and God. I thought that vision that's gave so me powerful. goosebumps. <laughs> Very powerful, but she's right. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think that thematically, another common denominator that I think we heard, I want to mm -hmm. get your opinions as well, from our conversations today is the importance of community. Mm -hmm. You know, I was mentioning this stat from anitab.org that showed that in 2022, the percentage of females in technical roles is 27.6%. It's a little bit of an increase. It's been hovering around 25% mm -hmm. for a while. But one of the things that's, that's still a problem is attrition. It doubled last right. year. And I was asking some of the guests, and, and we've all done that today, how would you advise companies to start moving the needle down on attrition? And mm -hmm. I think the common theme was network, community. Exactly. It takes a village like this, mm -hmm. so you can see what you can be to help start moving that needle. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, what underscores the value of wh what WIDS delivers and what we're able to showcase on theCUBE. Yeah, I think Absolutely. it's just very important to, like, if you're like a woman in tech, to be able to know that there's someone for you, that there's a whole community you can rely on, and that like you are, you have the same mindset, you're working towards the same goal, and it's just reassuring, and like, it feels very nice and warm to have all these women for you. It's definitely a warm fuzzy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. both the community within the work place, but also outside, exactly. like a network of family and friends who mm -hmm. support you yes. to, to um, pursue your career mm -hmm. goals. I, I think that was also a common theme we heard, that it's yeah necessary to both have you know your community within your company or organization you're working, but also outside. Definitely, I think that's also like how why the reason why we feel like this in like at Wits, like the like I think we all very feel very positive right yeah. now. So yeah, I think that's the like the power of the connection and the community. Yeah, and the nice thing is this is like I said, Wits is a movement. This is, is global. Mm -hmm. We've had some WIDS ambassadors on the program who started WIDS in Tel Aviv, for example, in their small communities, or in Singapore and, 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 and Mumbai that are bringing it here and, mm -hmm. and being becoming more of a visible part of the community. Right. Um, I loved seeing all the young faces when we walked in the keynote this morning. You know, we come here from, from a journalistic perspective. You guys are journalism mm -hmm. students. But seeing all the potential in the faces in that Definitely. room, just seeing and hearing stories and, and starting to make tangible connections between Facebook 
and data mm -hmm. and the end user and the perspectives and the privacy and the responsibility of AI um, is all, they're all positive messages that, that need to be reinforced Absolutely. and we need to have more platforms like this mm -hmm. to be able to not just raise awareness but sustain it. Exactly. Right, it's about the long term, it's about how do we dial down that attrition, what can mm -hmm. we do, what can we do, how can we help? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, both awareness, but also giving women like a place where they can connect, you know, yeah. also outside of conferences. Okay, yeah. how do we um, make this like a long-term thing? So I think WIDS is a great um, way to, you know, encourage um, this connectivity and yeah. um, these women teaming up. Um, <laughs> girls help girls. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. There's a lot of organizations out there, uh, Girls Who Code, Girls Inc., et cetera, mm -hmm. that, that are all aimed at helping women kind of find their, I think kind of find their voice. Exactly. And find that curiosity, yeah. mm -hmm. unlock that somewhere back there, um, get some courage mm -hmm. to raise your hand and say, I think I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Or I have a question. You explained something and I didn't understand it. I, that's the advice I would always give to my younger self is mm -hmm. never be afraid to raise your hand in a meeting. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, half the people weren't listening, or, and the other half may not have understood what was being talked about. Exactly. So raise your hand. <laughs> there goes Margot Garretson, the founder of Wiz. Hi, Margot. Um, Hi. Keep alumni, as you know. <laughs> raise your hand, ask the question. There's no question that's stupid. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, if you just take that chance once, it will yeah. open up so many doors, you won't even, you won't even know which door to go in because okay. there's so many that are opening. And if you, if you have the question, there's at least one more person in the room who have the exact totally. same, same question. question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll definitely keep that in mind as students. Well, I'm yes. curious how data journalism, what you heard today, mm -hmm. Tracy, we'll start with you and then Hannah to you. Mm -hmm. How has it influenced how you approach data-driven and storytelling, has it inspired you? I imagine it has, or has it given you any new ideas for as you round out your master's program in the next few months? I think like one key word that I found really helpful from like all the conversation today was problem solving. Because yeah. I think, like we talked a lot about in our program about how to put a face on data sets, how to put a face, put a name on a story that's like, Coming from like big data, a lot of numbers, but you need to like narrow it down to like one person or one anecdote that represents a bigger problem. Yeah. And I think essentially, that's problem solving. That's like the, there is a community. There is like say maybe even just one person who has a, some problem about something, and then we're using data. We're by giving them a voice by portraying them in news and like representing them in the media, we're solving this problem somehow. We're at least trying to solve this problem and trying yeah. to make some impact. And I think that's what, what, like what data science is about, is problem solving. And yeah, I think I heard a lot from today's conversation, also today's speakers. So yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's like something we should also think about as journalists when we do pitches or we're like, what kind of problem are we solving? I love that. Or like kind of what community are we trying to make an impact in? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the main learnings for me uh, that I want to apply like to my career in data journalism mm -hmm. is that I don't shy away from complexity because yeah, like exactly. data science is oftentimes very a complex, complex. Topic. Very. And also yes. data you're using for your stories is complex. Mm -hmm. So how can we on the one hand reduce complexity in a way that we make it accessible for a broader audience? Because yeah. we don't want to be this like tech bubble talking yeah. in data jargon. Uh -huh. We want to, you know, make it accessible for yeah. a broader audience. I think that's like my purpose mm -hmm. um, as a data journalist. Um, but at the same time don't reduce complexity when it's needed, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And be be open to dive into new topics and data sets and um, circling back to this of like raising your hand and asking questions if you don't understand mm -hmm. like a, a certain part. Yeah. So that's definitely a, a main learning from this conference definitely. that like people are willing to talk to you and mm -hmm. explain complex yeah. topics and um, this will definitely facilitate your work as a data journalist. Mm -hmm. So that inspired me. Well, yeah. I can't wait to see where you guys go from here. I've loved co-hosting yeah. with you today. Thank you, Thank you. for joining it me at the helm. It Thank fun? you. <laughs> it's a great event. Mm -hmm. It's it, we've I think we've all been very inspired and I, I'm going to leave here probably floating above the ground a few inches. It's <laughs> high on the inspiration of no. I definitely this feel community that. can deliver. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? It, it feels great. I don't know. Yeah. I just feel great. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so much good energy, <laughs> positive energy. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to thank all the organizers of WIDS, Judy Logan, Margot Garrettson in particular. We also want to thank the John Furrier, who is here 
and, and if you know John, you know he gets FOMO when he's not hosting, but John and Dave Vellante are such great supporters of women in technology, women in technical roles. We wouldn't be here without them. So shout out to my bosses. Thank you for giving me the keys to the queue at this event. I know it's painful sometimes, but we hope that we, we brought you great stories all day. We hope we inspired you with the, the females and, and the one male that we had on the program today in terms of raise your hand, ask a question, be curious. Don't be afraid to pursue what you're interested in. That's my, that's my uh, soapbox moment for now. So for my co-host, I'm Lisa Martin. We want to thank you so much for watching our program today. You can watch all of this on demand on thecube.net. You'll find write-ups on siliconangle.com and of course, YouTube. Thanks everyone, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.